So when I was 15, I moved to the United States for a year. And during that time, I went from 120 pounds to 160 something pounds. I stopped weighing myself. Mm. And so the shift there was basically eating home cooked foods and Swiss foods to eating mostly processed takeout foods. And so the family that I was living with, um, you know, they were very, very busy. And I was eating a lot of takeout food from McDonald's and Taco Bell and Domino's Pizza. And that's how I gained the weight. And that's when my health story really started. Mm. I started having um, focus issues, motivation issues. I started feeling fatigued, chronically fatigued on a regular basis. But when I was 16, after the year, I moved back to Switzerland and was able to lose some of the weight. My health sort of started to restore itself again until I moved back to the United States at age 19 for good. And I started gaining weight again because of the dietary changes. And so that's when I really started getting motivated to make some dramatic changes. Yeah. Why? Yeah. why? This is a big question. But why do Americans eat just so terribly? Like, is that just, do other countries eat just as bad or are we just the worst? I think it's our environment. It's just what's normal here. I think we eat a lot of processed foods mm -hmm. just because everybody does it. You know, if you're celebrating a birthday for your kid, um, you know, a birthday cake is going to look better than like, hey, here's some apples. Happy birthday. Yeah. Right. And so we we tend to just be in that environment that will feed us more processed foods. It's convenient. It's, um, you know, cheaper mm. a lot of times. Yeah. Um, and it's basically how we show our love right through the foods. Hey, I got this very, very special bottle of um, juice for you. And that's how I'm going to show my love. Right. And so we're just so stuck in that environment now so that we um, don't really see that that's not the way we have always lived. Right. And that can get us into trouble. And that's the reason why we're consuming 30 times more sugar than we did in like 200 years ago. Wow. Right. And so um, we, in order for us to go back to um, our health and restoring our health and balance in our body, we really got to go back to how we used to eat, right? Our grand, grand, grandparents didn't have the conditions that we have today. And so it's really important to kind of realize our environment and change our environment and our nutrition and redesigning to bring back nature into our lives. Mm. Yeah. I wonder, and this is not a knock on freedom and capitalism and democracy, but I wonder if there's not some connection between the freedom, like America's so like, you know, we got our rights, we can do what we want, we're free, and unhealthy food. Like, it'd be interesting to look at a, a, a scale of, of different countries and their level of desire for freedom and how bad they eat. Because I think there's, I mean, there's got to be some connections. Like, don't tell me what I can't eat. I can eat McDonald's if I want to eat McDonald's every meal. Because right. it's free. I wonder if that's like in our soul extrapolates outward in a lot of unhealthy ways. Absolutely. I think it's kind of the thread in our society, right? That we get the freedom to do whatever it is that we want to do. Yeah. And it's good in some ways. And it's also bad, right? Humans are the only ones that have choice. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of choices are we making? And some of those choices are just part of our culture, right? Yeah. Like we grow up, um, everybody's going to have some fast food, you yeah. know, and we want that by choice because it's designed to make us addicted to it, right? Yeah. And so I think with choice also comes responsibility. Like, am I going to think long term about my health or do I want instant gratification, yeah. right? And oftentimes we live such stressful lives that instant gratification is just what sounds the best. I'm going to go to McDonald's and order um, a Happy Meal or, you know, whatever meal that they offer there. And I'm going to consume it in my car. I'm yep. going to drive through. I'm going to pick it up. I'm quickly going to um, eat that because it's going to alter the way I feel. Yeah. You know, and so I think um, many of us don't realize what ki kind of an effect it has long term until we get sick. Right. And that's the story um, that I experienced. Right. I ate those foods and then I got chronically ill. I started not being able to live my life. I was completely debilitated. Really? I would sleep for two days and I would wake up Monday and get ready for school. And it was a struggle to get out of bed because my body was so toxic 
it was dealing with so much processing foods. And um, so I think we, again, just have to really um, redesign our nutrition and go back to um, our original design. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You know, there's a, there's a passage in, I think it's in, uh, I don't know, one of the New Testament books of the Bible where uh, I think it's Paul says, everything is permissible, not everything is beneficial. And I love that phrase of like, yeah, like, it's kind of the with great responsibility or great freedom comes great responsibility or whatever the what's what's the line from Star Wars when I I mean uh, Spider I am butchering a lot right now Spider Man <laughs> Uncle Ben with great power. power thank you Alex with great power comes great responsibility yeah but this idea of everything like I'm allowed it's permissible for me to go eat a Big Mac every single day that's allowed yes and a lot of people take that as as it's therefore okay right uh, but as a big piece of freedom is saying. I'm also free not to do that. Yes. I do believe that there is no right and no wrong in the universe, mm. right? Um, if a tree dies, is it right or wrong? If a human dies, is it ultimately right or wrong? There's no right or wrong. If you're choosing McDonald's, gosh, I'm kind of, you know, attacking McDonald's. I actually <laughs> yeah, used yeah. to work at McDonald's as a teenager in Switzerland. Oh, there you go. Um, but... It's not really right or wrong. It's just, you know, what we choose to do. Yeah. And um, is it right or wrong that our body is getting diseased? You know, there's not really a right or wrong because um, we get to choose. We yeah. get to choose, um, but we also have to live with the consequences. Yeah. Right? Well, I think, yeah, it's, right or, it's right, or, right or wrong only matters when you put a baseline, like, value system on it, right? So if you yes. said, I value living a long time. So therefore, there are right and wrongs to align up with that value, right? But if we don't have a unified value, then if you haven't defined what you actually want in life, then how can you define whether or not something's good or not? Yes. And, and sometimes we choose our goal unconsciously, Yeah. right? We're not aligning our actions with our goals, mm. and we have no clue which trajectory we're taking, right? Yeah. Um, 75%, almost 75%, of Americans over 65 have high blood pressure or are prehypertensive, according to the CDC. And most of them actually don't know about it. Mm. And so did they consciously choose that or did yeah. they just end up there mm -hmm. because they didn't have a clear goal, right? So it's actually very important. I know that you do the goal setting retreat and actually um, having a compass for ourselves and for you know our lives to um intentionally create our path right yeah. instead of just kind of going wherever life takes us yeah, yeah so it's important to set those goals so that you actually know exactly where you're going 